welcome in worship today as we transition from fall to the season of Advent, the time when we prepare for the birth of Jesus Christ. As we begin today, let us do so in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. O wisdom proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things, come and teach us this way of prudence. O Adonai and ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law at Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come thou wisdom from on high, who orders things all mightily. To us the path of knowledge show And teach her in the ways to go Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to thee, O This time we join in professing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. 
By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today comes from Mark chapter 13. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch, Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. That's our gospel reading for today. Savior in the heavens wide Come down, come down with mighty stride Unlock the gates, the doors break down Unbar the way to heaven's crown Oh Father Our sermon reading this morning comes from Isaiah 64, beginning in chapter 1. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire 
causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversary so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Before we get into our sermon today, let's begin with a quick prayer. Father, as we begin this new year, this new, this new church year, as we begin the Advent season, I, I pray, Lord, that you just open our hearts. Open our hearts to hear your word proclaimed, but Lord, open our hearts to see you at work. Lord, help us anticipate joyously, eagerly, your arrival. And Lord, shape us to be your people to see you at work wherever we are. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to open up with you real quick. We don't get to see each other in person right now, and that's fine, but I'm going to speak to those of you right now that love Christmas and were frothing at the bit to get your Christmas decorations up well before Thanksgiving. Now, I know right now we're... We're on the uh, Sunday after Thanksgiving, and in my house, that was, that was always the time to set up the Christmas tree was, was the day after or the weekend after Thanksgiving, and never any sooner. And I'll be honest with you, I have been a bit of a curmudgeon. I have been a bit of an old man. I have been a bit of a grump when it comes to celebrating Christmas too early. And it seemed like every year uh, I would go into the Target or I'd go into the grocery store and I'd hear Christmas music playing earlier and earlier. I would see uh, decorations out earlier and earlier. And for some reason in me, it just felt absurd. Why are we trying to jump past Thanksgiving? Why are we in such a hurry to get to Christmas? And I'll be honest with you, I, I probably judged more than I should at those houses that had decorations up too early. So that's my confession. And now I'm going to ask for your forgiveness because I think this year, for the first year, I really understand it. This year has been awful for many of us. And I think it's fair to say this is not how many of us expected to be spending our, our week after Thanksgiving. And this year, for the first time, when I walked into the Target while Halloween was still going on and I saw Christmas decorations for sale, my heart lifted and I, I felt joy. Um, because like many of you, I have been experiencing what I guess they've been calling COVID fatigue. I'm tired. It seems like this year has been 15 years. I don't know if it was the election. I don't know what it might have been. I, I don't know if it was the COVID. Maybe it was the murder hornets that finally broke me. But this has felt like a dark year. And Christmas was a welcome, a welcome sight. And I'm, I'm really thankful that we are starting the series now because I think for the first time in a long time, this new year, this new church year, this Advent season has felt particularly appropriate in considering it in the light of our readings. You see, underlying both of the readings that you heard this morning is the same fundamental question that I think many of us have been asking ourselves and each other all year long. It's been this question of when. If you look at the Isaiah reading, there is this implicit question underneath. When will this be over? How long will we have to wait? When you look at the Mark reading, you see the same thing as Jesus is answering questions. When, when is the kingdom going to arrive? This question underpins both 
of these texts. And it's an important question. You see, in the Isaiah passage, we are left with a, a people that are in despair in what seems like the darkest moment in the existence of this people. In this reading in Isaiah, everyone is so distraught, so broken in exile as they have been taken over, occupied by a foreign kingdom, sent into these kingdoms and looking like they will never be able to return home. They are in what seems like despair. And they are so broken that they want to see something miraculous happen. They know God has worked in the past so much so that they're asking in the opening lines, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. How long are we going to have to wait? How long are we going to be in this miserable, miserable place? God, we would love to see you just, just skip all the intermediaries. Skip all the small miracles. Just rip the heavens open and come down yourself because we are broken and we don't see a way out. Now, in this passage, in this passage in Isaiah, the Israelites come close to understanding why they're there. They say, God, you're not here, so we sin. It gets worse because you're not around. But they don't quite exactly acknowledge the real reason, which is, no, God's not there because they, they abandoned him first. They didn't quite recognize yet that their sin, or at least willing to admit to themselves that their sin was the very reason that they were in this, this, this absolutely, what I'd call the darkest timeline, this place where it seemed like there was no hope. But they know, they know that God is still good, even though they are bad, and they are asking God, please, please come and restore us. Now, at the end of the passage in Isaiah, they, they go on to say, yes, it is awful, but they still recognize, though, God, you are still good. And they say that we are the clay and you are the potter. They're saying, God, we recognize that we are still your creation and that you haven't abandoned us. And in fact, when we get to the New Testament, we see the result of that because the Israelites eventually do find restoration. The exile does come to an end and they end up back in Israel. In fact, they've made it back and their people are, quote unquote, restored, but they know that it's still not the way it's supposed to be. Because even though they've made it back to Israel, when Jesus arrives, when Jesus arrives and he is in Mark, they're still, they're still in many ways without a hope. They're still waiting for God to tear the heavens open and intercede on their behalf. They're still under control of a foreign government. They still don't feel like a total people, a whole people, they still, don't feel restored and they still know that everything hasn't been made right yet. Even though they're back where they're supposed to be, that same question is still, still permeating everything they're saying, which is, God, when? When will this be over? When will you come to restore all things? And in that period, they find themselves looking towards anything that could possibly restore them. They're looking towards political movements like the Maccabees, who tried to run this foreign government out, right? They're looking towards trying to be the best citizens possible. They're looking towards the Pharisees to show them how to live so that maybe they can work their way into encouraging God to come back. But that same question, when is this darkness going to be over? And the crazy thing is, like Isaiah and in Mark, Jesus gives an answer to them that is not totally satisfying. In Isaiah, we get the, uh, get the impression that the question, how long, is, is not answered. If anything, there is an answer which is not yet. And when the disciples ask the same sort of question to Jesus, which leads into this, when are these things going to come to pass? Jesus has what feels like a pretty dissatisfying answer, not yet. And that's an answer that I really, I really hear this year and it struck me hard because I would say that trying to parent my kids through this year, when they come to me and say, hey dad, when, when do we get to go back to normal? When are things going to turn around? When do things get better? Often my only answer is, I don't know. Or if I'm trying to be more positive, say, good is on the way, just not yet. Now the funny thing is, in, in reading that passage, we have insight into something that the disciples did. Something that leads directly into this Advent season. 
in the midst of this absolutely miserable year. We are now facing what looks like a new year. And for some of us, that is a season of joy. For some of us, it is a season of even more concern. But that same question still lingers with us when we just look at our world as it stands now. When is it gonna be better? We look around and we've had a year, decades of scandals, of heartache, of wars, rumors of wars, all of those things. And the same question that the Israelites were asking in Isaiah, the same question that Jesus' disciples were asking in Mark, is often the same question we ask now. When, God? When is it going to be better? When are you just going to tear the heavens open and make your presence known? When are you going to bypass the intermediaries? Because the politicians don't seem to do it well. The organizations, our own abilities to try to push forward, it doesn't seem to make it any better, God. When are you going to intervene? And we have our answer in what we anticipate in Advent. The simple fact that Jesus himself is answering the disciples. That is our answer to win. Yeah, not yet. We know that God truly is on the way. But what his disciples failed to see is that the heavens had already been torn open. That God did bypass the intermediaries and decide to calm himself to restore all things. This is a season where we ask that question, when, and we see the answer right on the horizon. When? Now, in and through Jesus Christ, in his birth, God takes on human likeness, the form of a servant that he may himself come serve us to restore us to new life. It's easy to look at everything that has gone on over the last year, this, this pandemic, whatever it may be, and say, God, I don't see the hope in this. But then we can actually look to the hope we have in the Advent season. And it's easy to forget that that hope is there. It's easy to forget and get caught up in everything, but I think that's why it's so important what Jesus says at the end of the passage in Mark, where he says to his disciples, this is what I say to you all, keep awake. Stay awake. Keep your eyes open. And that's exactly what we are doing in this new year. We ask the question when, and Jesus says, open up your eyes, stay awake. Why? Because he's saying, it has already begun in me. In Jesus, his death, his resurrection, we are already brought into his kingdom and into new life. It is a real hope. When we ask when, we have an answer already now. Not yet, but already now. It is the hope that we have as followers of Jesus that when we look at this new year, we can truly say that there is hope. That even though it's crazy everywhere else, we have this Christmas season to look forward to. The King has arrived in Jesus and will arrive again when Jesus returns to restore all things. That is the hope we have. And that finally hit me this year when I looked at those Christmas decorations early and said, oh, I get it. I get it. When? It's never too early to start looking forward to it. When are you coming to make it all better? Now. Whether it's Thanksgiving, Halloween, the middle of summer, it doesn't matter because we know that God has come and will come and that in us we have new life because of him. So my, my prayer for you as we move into this Advent season, as we gear up for a new sermon series that Pastor Richard is starting next week, as we go into our midweeks, that you'll keep that same posture, that awakeness, that, that desire to keep your eyes open for those moments where God is breaking in now and keep our eyes focused on the true moment that God did tear the heavens open and came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. With that, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have hope. We have something to stay awake for, something to look forward to, that in Jesus you tore the heavens open and came yourself to restore all things. As you continue to prepare our hearts in this Advent season for the arrival of the King, Lord, help us look back to what you have done in Jesus and what you are doing in us now. And Lord, equip us to bring that hope to our neighbors as we go forward in this Christmas season and bring that joy and that good news to others. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without home facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed and underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. And Lord, today we especially continue to pray for Amy, who's been hospitalized, for Don as he continues to recover from eye surgery, for Lori, who's been diagnosed with breast cancer, for Rose, who's recovering from hip surgery, Mary Kay as she continues to recover, Nathan as he undergoes tests, for Jack that his new treatment would be successful, for Pat as she grieves the loss of her husband, and Jenna that she'd keep her safe. Ease the suffering of these individuals, Lord, and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Almighty God, we continue to lift up in prayer as missionaries who are working to bring your word throughout the world. Gracious Lord, remind us that we too are your missionaries. And Lord, today we remember our nation and our leaders, leaders of the nations of this world as well, that you would give them wisdom and guiding and that you would let your word and your will be seen. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witnesses of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together at this time in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee israel's strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art
born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring, bind thine own eternal spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>